This video talks about lung and chest wall relationship. This is from page 562, first date 2012. So if you want to follow along with me, please uh, feel free to do so. So whenever we look at this graph, we see that the, that the y-axis is volume and the x-axis is pressure. So really, this is a compliance graph or a compliance curve um, where the purple line is a compliance of the chest wall, the red line is a compliance of the lung, and the green line is a compliance of the combination of the two. So now let's get a little bit more detail. So we can see from the graph that the red line is never negative. So that the compliance of the lung is never negative where the chest wall moves from the negative side to the positive side. And the reason for that is because, uh, let's talk about the lung, the red line first. The, the reason lung is never negative is because lung has elastic properties. Okay, So it, has, it tends to draw itself inwards. May, it cannot have pressure. It cannot have a negative pressure inside the lung. Because, because of this elastic properties, the negative pressure draws the lung inwards. So it always starts from zero. It can never be negative. Well, chest wall tends to fall out, outward. It does not tend to fall inward. And because the chest wall tends to fall outward, it will put the lung in a negative pressure and that's when we inspire and draw air inwards and that's why chest wall can have a negative pressure because it falls outwards rather than inwards and the green line obviously the combination of the chest wall being negative slowly as we inspire the chest you know inside the chest wall the chest wall becomes positive and the lung with more air inside is going to be more and more positive showing the positive side of the the lung and chest wall system in the green line. Now we can see that from the alveolar pressure, which is always positive, and the negative chest wall pressure, which is kind of, they, they, they balance each other, right? The positive and the neg negative should balance each other. And when they completely balance each other, um, they should, we should have uh, the value to be zero, okay? So this is exactly where they balance each other absolutely perfectly and this point is obviously called the FRC and because FRC has a, has a zero pressure um, it will neither draw air in nor draw air out it is a moment of stillness right it's not going to do anything because the pressure is equilibrated at FRC so now let's look at the curves a little separately in detail so whenever we are, let's say, let's talk about the, the lung graph first, okay? So if we look at it separately, so let's say this is zero, okay? This borderline is obviously zero. And it's uh, positive uh, when you go up, negative when you go down. But we know that uh, lung volume or lung pressure never goes down, never goes negative. So I didn't even bother drawing the negative side. It's only the positive side. So when we are inspiring, okay, uh, the, the pressure from zero, it's going to go up. The, it's going to be positive pressure in the lung because there is more air in the lung. And as we're in, expiring, uh, the pressure falls down back to zero. This is for the lung. So now let's talk about how the graph is going to look like if we are talking about alveolar pressure. So when we're talking about lung pressure, in lung pressure will never be negative, okay? But alveolar pressure, yes, that can be negative. So what happens is, so let's say this is zero. So at alveolar pressure, what's going to happen is, what happens is when we're inspiring, we uh, the lung there is a there is a negative pressure created by the chest wall right the chest wall expands and a negative create uh, negative pressure is created in the alveolus so initially the pressure is going to be zero in the alveolus and the pressure is going to start dropping okay and then as the pressure starts dropping um, the alveolus starts filling up with oxygen or with air and then the alveolar pressure will start going to go up and reach zero at the end of inspiration okay and this the opposite happens with expiration as we're expiring the pressure is going to be positive 
and back to zero by the end of expiration because when we're expiring we are kind of falling back inwards the alveolus kind of collapses inwards creating a positive pressure in the lungs now this fall in pressure is usually one negative 1.5 millimeter mercury when it falls and about positive 1.5 millimeter mercury when it's going up okay so that is our alveolar pressure so remember how um, it was very different than the inspiration and the expiration from the chest wall the chest wall was uh, you know it went like that right uh, a moon a half moon kind of picture um, where this is quite different so the pressure relationship the positive and the negative is different for the alveolus and for the lung so now let's talk about intrapleural pressure during expiration and inspiration so intrapleural pressure is never positive if it's positive you have a problem okay so let's say intrapleural pressure is going to be negative 5 at the beginning of uh, inspiration and it will fall even more negative okay so it's going to be like this negative let's say 8 at the end of inspiration it will be negative 8 and then when it will expire it will jump back to negative 5 again from negative 8 to negative 5 so interpleural plural pressure at the beginning of inspiration will be negative and the end of inspiration will be more negative but at the end of expiration it will go back to uh, negative 5 so this is also where FRC is right I mean the position where nothing changes at FRC is going to be negative 5 so if I asked you a question of this particular diagram and I say at FRC what's going to be the intrapleural pressure it's going to be negative 5 millimeter mercury okay let's let's extend the thought um, what's going to be the pressure in the alveolus at FRC at alveolus at al the alveolar pressure is going to be 0 millimeter mercury and the chest wall at FRC is going to be um, a positive pressure, obviously. So not the chest wall, uh, the lung. The lung is going to have a positive pressure where the chest wall will have a negative pressure at FRC. But combined together, they're going to have zero 